Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your host today, Matthew Johnson, and this is a show where we talk to Hawaii's foodies, farmers, and everyone who cares about Hawaii's local food systems. Uh, as always, you can join the conversation by tweeting in at, at ThinkTechHI, and you can also now call in and talk to us. We really hope you do, it'd be great. I don't think anyone's ever actually called. So the number is 808-374. 2014. So please, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, as always, we have an exciting guest, and with us today, we have Amanda Corby with Under My Umbrella. And she's going to be talking about the upcoming Hawaii Book and Music Festival, which is also going to be featuring a lot of local chefs and local food. So, Amanda, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having us. So, I think I've been quasi-harassing you for at least two <laughs> years now uh, to come on the show. So, it's very exciting to have you here. Yeah. And I uh, can't wait. So, let's just go ahead and get started. Yeah, sounds great. Um, so, Amanda, why don't you, um, before we talk all about yourself because you are uh, involved with a lot of different things. Um, tell us about the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. Sure. So um, this is the second year that we at Under My Umbrella and P the Group are involved with the festival. Mm -hmm. And what we've introduced because the Book and Music Festival, this is the 13th year, they've always been about supporting uh, the local community. There's always been hula, storytelling, entertainers, music, many things. And there were food vendors there, but as our um, community of people interested and passionate about food and farms really has been um, rising in the past several years, they decided to create a venue just for that. So Peely Group this year, in partnership with Ulupono Initiative, has a um, food and cookbook venue at the Book and Music Festival. Mm -hmm. So we'll have two full days of panels and chef demos, um, all revolving around local source food, whether it's a little bit of storytelling, talking about climate change in our food systems, learning how to make dumplings with Chef Leanne Wong. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, Chef Mark Noguchi, will be doing a little bit of cooking and harassing of people as well. <laughs> and we're very excited to have the Oahu Food Hub mm -hmm. and Oahu Fresh there mm -hmm. serving local produce to the about 30,000 visitors that we'll have over the weekend. Wow, you pretty much just summed up the whole festival in one or two breaths. That was amazing. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> so uh, well, let's kind of break that down a little bit. Sure. So the White Book and Music Festival, this is the 13th that's year. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And where is it located? Um, it's on the Civic Ground, so right off of King Street. It takes, I mean, it really takes up several blocks. So it's on the entire Civic Ground property. I think there's about 30 different venues that are set up on the property there. So there'll be lots of signage. There's parking on King Street. Mm -hmm. um, at the um, public parking space, it's actually free oh, on wow. both dates to be able to park there as well. So Wow, cool. That's so Lots of space for lots of people. Yeah, so it seems like kind of a little bit of all of the best that uh, Hawaii really has to, to offer. So we've got the, the book part of it. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? So it's going to be featuring, I know, local authors, and what, what, what does that all look like? Yeah, so my understanding is that at each different station, mm -hmm. um, there's a wellness station, and that will be all featured around speakers and panelists talking about wellness. There's an author station. We, I think Christy Yamaguchi will be there talking about her book, or I think books maybe that she has out. Um, they fly in a lot of authors from the mainland as yeah. well as featuring local authors here. So I think for two days straight, you will be seeing over 50 di different authors that are represented there. And they're going to be doing all kinds of readings. Uh, there's a children's zone that's just focused on children's books. Um, Uncle Wayne and the Howling Dog Band oh, yeah. is going to be there for both days, which, as you know, my daughters are huge fans of that. Officially groupies. Yes, they're total. They have shirts. <laughs> they're those girls. Yeah, yeah. It already is their those first girls. First groupie experience. <laughs> yeah. So we're excited, though. We're really excited that it's it's grown to be something that there's something for you, there's something for me, there's something for your grandma, mm -hmm. and there's something for my kids. Yeah, no, that's great. So we just saw a picture on the screen here. Uh, looked like um, you can actually buy books as well. So it's going to yeah. be a book sale. I think one of the highlights of the event for everyone is they have a book swap. So people, oh, okay. you can bring five books, mm. and they get all laid out on the table, and you can do a book swap. 
So you don't even have to spend any money. There are places where you can buy books as well, but I think historically that's really been a highlight for folks is mm -hmm. the book swap. Um, I'm busy setting up our venue, so I never get to see the excitement really at the other tents throughout. Yep. But what I hear is I think there's a big line of people that come and some people are really adamant about being there for the beginning of this book swap that's happening. But it does continue for the whole weekend. Wow, fun. Um, so let's talk about the, the food part of the, the festival, which uh, your groups, uh, Peely Group and also Under My Umbrella, are helping to organize. So talk a little bit about that. So you mentioned that there's going to be some cooking demonstrations. There's going to be some chefs there. Uh, also going to be doing the farmer's market. Um, so yeah, talk a little bit about like who's going to be there on the food side. Sure. So on Saturday morning, we get started um, Saturday, May 5th, and 10 a.m. is whenever we get started with activities there. And we will have Ashley Watts, who you mm. know from Local IA, which mm -hmm. is a community-supported um, fish share. Mm -hmm. And she has really done a great job. She was with us last year as well. Of, educating both adults and children about um, sustainable and locally caught fish through art. So she brings some small fish with her and we have fish prints early in the morning time. Oh, so neat. kids can come down, we have a little station set up. Ashley brings out fish. They talk about them, where the gills and the eyes are mm -hmm. and the kids get to touch them, but they also get to make fish prints that they can take home with them. So we start the morning off with that, with Ashley in the morning. And then we go into our first panel. I'm gonna make sure I tell you correctly yeah. Because it's yep. it's updating every minute. Mm -hmm. um, next at eleven is when we'll have dumplings all day. Wong with Chef Leanne Wong. Mm -hmm. She was um, with us last year as well, and a huge hit. She was talking about her book, her cookbook, Dumplings All Day yeah. Long. So what happens is at a chef demo, um, we have a stage with the little mirror. We're very professional with the mirror, oh, yeah. so you can see, see and happening. the audience does a very good job of telling us if it's not positioned correctly. <laughs> um, that's what I love about this crowd. It's mm. all ages, all types. Yeah. So you really that just means you know that they're they're interested. They're, they're into interested it. and they're they're outspoken, which I really appreciate. They're Fun. they're willing to help us do our job better. Um, <laughs> I love that instant feedback. Yes. Instant feedback. So you set up so you can really watch what's happening. We ask the chefs to make it very um, house cooking friendly. So yeah. we don't need all the, you know, the Nothing fancy things they do for fancy. us in the restaurant. Yeah. That we want it to be everything that you can make at home. Yeah. So they'll go through how to make it and the best part is at the end, um, they do sampling. Mm. So you get to try the dishes. So Presumably, if you came for both days, you could try dishes from eight different chefs that, oh, you know, wow. otherwise you would have to go to the restaurants to try. Yeah. And they're all featuring locally sourced ingredients in their dishes, which, as you know about us, is kind of the baseline from what we build from when we work with folks. Yeah. So we're excited to be able to highlight not just the chefs, but also the farmers and the producers who are making and growing and loving on um, the food that we're eating. Yeah. So. Leanne, chef demo. Mm -hmm, um, so doing the dumplings. Doing the dumplings. And then we have, um, I like this one. We have Perfect Pickles, um, two easy Chinese recipes featuring Lynette Lo Tom, mm. which I think everyone knows from the Star Advertiser. She has a cooking column with the advertiser, oh, okay. is always sharing really great recipes. Um, and she's a real character, very charismatic, gets people involved, and is happy to share some of her recipes with us there and also is going to share some history with us about kind of Chinese cooking in Hawaii and how it came to be. So I'm excited to have her there to be able to share knowledge and history as well as how to make a perfect pickle. Wow, that's fun, because I think, yeah, pickling is something everybody's heard about, but not everybody knows how to do it, and it's actually pretty simple. So that seems like a perfect I'll thing for I'll make sure everyone. that you're up there to help her with oh. it. That would, be, that would be great since you're there. Then you can help her with the perfect pickle. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. awesome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, uh, from 1 to 145, we have how to process a fish. Maybe what somebody can call in and tell us. We try to come up with a name for this panel. Ashley Watts is going to show people how the basics of how to break down a fish, yep. which I think... You know, the Kimmy Warners of the world make it look easy yeah. to break down a fish, and we all feel like, I don't know if I can do that. But yeah. it's actually quite simple to do, yeah. and you do it one or two times, and it's something you can do at home. And for us, then it really widens the horizon of the kinds of fish that you will eat, because there's lots of fish that taste 
really or no, mm. but if you don't know how to process it, then you're kind of limited to the fillets that you can buy in the market or getting from someone like Ashley. So she's going to try and uh, make it feel less um, intimidating as far as breaking down a fish. But I couldn't think of a sexy title for it. Less intimidating than breaking down a fish? That doesn't sound good to you. <laughs> well, I, 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 want, I want her to, I want it to be like people like, oh yeah, I want to learn that. Yeah, so. breaking down a fish. I feel like there's got to be another phrase for that. But hopefully our viewers we'll call in. are uh, going to call in or tweet in um, or send a postcard. Yeah, whatever. you know what, tell them they'll get... They'll get a fish on me if they come up with a clever title for how to process a fish, because that's currently what we're going with for that uh, 1 o'clock slot. Okay. Then at 2 p.m., um, we're excited. We're going to have Melly James with us um, for a Mana Up Talk story. Oh, that's nice. That's going to be really cool. So it's we're calling our panels Talk Stories mm -hmm. because... Um, we want to get people's mindsets away from it's a panel sitting yeah. talking at you. We want it to be more um, inclusive of the audience as well and make time for a lot of question and answer mm -hmm. and e even make the format a little bit more informal of people sharing knowledge. So Mele is going to have a few of her partners from Mana Up mm. there to talk about what Mana Up is and how they're supporting our local food system. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to that panel or talk story. Yeah, fine. Yeah, and they're having their uh, kind of launch party tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, you're going to be you there? there. Okay, awesome. I'll buy, I'll buy you a beer. Oh, fantastic. Um, then we have Cooking in Pono, and this is with uh, Le Leanne, who is the author of Cooking in Pono. And she, I think her book came out a few years ago, mm -hmm. but she's really excited to be sharing. We'll actually have her there for both days, and she's going to talk about how we cook in a more Pono fashion, how to incorporate our local traditional um, values here mm -hmm. in Hawaii into our cooking and make it healthy and yummy at the same time. So. Again, another time for free bites of food. Yeah, it sounds like we're going to be eating and partying pretty much the whole weekend. And that's neat, too, with what you're talking about with Leanne and kind of how to cook Pono. And I know um, she's real involved with the, uh, I know with like Surfrider, they do the ocean-friendly restaurants. Yep. Uh, and there's also the other organization, I'm blanking on the name of it, of uh, the group of chefs. It's like high. Oh, the, the dames? Dames? Yeah, Les Dames. But there's another one, too, where they're talking about more of using sustainable uh, food practices in the restaurants. But yeah, so she's real involved in, in just, you know, she's, she's a well-known chef, both from you know, New York and now here in Hawaii, and probably one of the best spots to get brunch uh, in Honolulu. But it's neat that she's, you know, constantly trying to make her place better, and that's great that she's going to be talking about how everyone can do that. And they're cooking at home and yeah. make it more enjoyable. We call we call her Mama Wong. She's definitely mama the mama of um, the culinary world and of brunch. And we we love now that she has a um, little son. Yeah. She's also learning to cook for babies as well. So maybe there'll be a new cookbook out. I can't think of the clever name of what it would be, but Baby Wong Wong, Wong <laughs> Baby, yeah. Well, no, that's Wong, another, Wong Baby. I don't know if that one will work out. Sounds like a, Sorry, well, that's Leah. another uh, piece of homework uh, for our viewers to do. And they can do that during the break. So uh, we have to take a quick 60-second uh, break, and we'll be right back with Amanda. Amanda. My friend, Mother, what big eyes you have. She said, all the better to see you with, my dear. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. this is the starting line. Push. Uh, uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. And 
we're back to Life Food and Farmer series. Uh, as always, or actually just really once a month now, I'm your host, Matt Johnson, and today we're talking to Amanda Corby with Peely Group slash Under My Umbrella. And we're talking about the Hawaii Book and Music Festival, which is gonna be happening uh, in a couple weekends from now, May 5th and 6th. So you're just kind of going through the schedule, getting us all excited for the cooking demonstrations and everything happening. Um, I guess uh, we still have the schedule of what's happening on Sunday, Sunday May yeah. 6th. Yeah, Sunday. So same thing. We start at um, 10 a.m. with our cakey fish activity again with Ashley Watts. Oh. So it's a good, you know, it's 10 a.m. I don't know if people are quite ready for breaking down fish or eating poke at mm. 10 a.m. in the morning. So mm -hmm. we like to give them something to do that get the kids entertained and agreeable to stay for the rest of the day. So we found last year it was really great to have a cakey activity in yeah. the beginning of um, the day. Then we're going to, at 11, we're going to a value-added food talk and taste, which I think maybe you can tell us a little bit of something about with the Wahoo Food Hub folks. Yeah. So <laughs> About that. That's right. That's right. I forgot I was part of this itinerary. So yeah, so the I think I'm going to be uh, maybe talking at that uh, event as well. So we're going to be talking about kind of value-added products so highlighting um, some of the different products that a lot of um, small businesses are doing here featuring local uh, produce local meats so as part of the Wahoo Food Hub which is the um, warehouse that houses about 15 different food businesses we're going to wow, invite some of those team. tenants yeah um, to come and talk about what they're doing um, so we have Lauren Shoup has been on the show before who's going to be talking about uh, what they're doing with breadfruit, ulu, and making it into ulu hummus. Um, and then we also have Bryn from Voyaging Foods is going to be talking about some of the stuff that they've been doing with uh, ulu and cauliflower. And then we also have uh, Bob McGee, uh, who is with Pono Pork. Mm -hmm. So he's been doing a lot of work with uh, local pig farmers and working to really um, take that final pig product and break it down and have it available uh, for restaurants and then making different value-add products with that. So I think it's going to be a neat talk just kind of, you know, because everybody knows, yep, support your farmers and, you know, buying produce at the farmer's markets, but then there's, you know, people also kind of take it to that next step. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm the host of the show. Yeah, just like that. I might take it over. You know, the rest of the show <laughs> is yours. <laughs> Getting. Um, so looking forward to that. That sounds awesome. I'm really, we've been talking for so long, I feel like, about value-added products mm -hmm. and how to get them to market and how to create a more sustainable living for farmers through thinking about value-added products. So I love that now we're not just talking about it. There's actually people doing it. Yeah. And I think as we educate the public about people doing this, that's the way that then we support them in being successful in these yeah. things they're doing. So awesome. I'm really glad to hear that that's going on. Um, after after your panel, we're going to have Cooking for Community. Um, that's going to be by my husband, Chef Mark Noguchi, mm. which we're excited about this um, cooking demo because it's not just him being his usual funny self. Mm. He's actually going to be cooking um, based on this project that we started with Key Project out in mm. Kahalu'u. And um, we are feeding out there currently currently um, twice a week about 150 um, elders kapuna a day wow. so we have a partnership with them and on Wednesdays and Fridays there's a free meal program for the kapuna of Kahalu'u and Pili Group has been um, working on this project and testing out uh, different recipes that are healthy, that are using locally sourced ingredients, but that are also things that the kapuna really enjoy eating and that kind of take them back to um, uh, to, to past times and remi you know, remind them of why they love not just living on the east side but also eating from all the farms on that side. Wow. So Mark's going to do a demo kind of based around what he's found with um, that partnership out there and so that, that should be, the food won't be bad. I would imagine. <laughs> I think that's the understatement of the show. Um, 1 p.m. we have a public-private partnership through the eyes of Farm to School. This is going to be a really cool talk story. It's with the lieutenant governor mm. um, and some of the partners from HMSA Foundation, from Kaiser Permanente, and from Ulupono who are or who are working together. They're doing this project in Mililani. I'm sure you may know yep. about the project they're doing in Mililani. So they're kind of going to talk about how this partnership in 
in the Farm to School movement allowed these different for-profit and not-profit entities to come together and work to support the local food system. So, do you, I mean, I know a little bit about the project happening in Mililani with the schools, and I know it's kind of a pilot project mm -hmm. that's going on, but it sounds like if it's successful, it could be huge for our school systems here. Well, yeah, I mean, it's very, I mean, there's been a lot of talk and chat, a lot of groups interested in getting more local food uh, into the schools, into the cafeterias, and there's a lot of red tape, and there's a lot of unfortunate reasons why that's challenging. Sure. So, um, yeah, what I know about this project in Milani is that they're using this as a, a pilot project to really kind of work through that red tape. And so it's good having all those different, we have Department of Education involved, and then you have some different funding organizations and, and also the farms as well to actually figure out how to do it. So um, I think a lot of uh, people, a lot of groups throughout the state are really looking at this project. So that's going to be a fantastic conversation. Yeah, so I, I'm lo looking forward. I think that's going to be great. That's again 1 to 145. Then at 2 p.m., another like powerhouse from the west side. We're going to have Albie Miles and some folks from UH West Oahu. Cool. And they will be talking about the future of our food and climate change. We just did a super cool um, kind of experience dinner, and I had Albie and a few of the folks from West Oahu come mm -hmm. out. It was in conjunction with an art exhibit um, called Flooded. Oh, yeah. Did you check that out? I wasn't able to make that one. So part of Honolulu Biennial, but there is all these amazing photos of the, what the future of our food will look like based on what will survive in 30 wow. to 50 years. Oh, neat. Um, so, Come check out that panel and you'll learn more about some of the work they're doing at West Oahu as well. And also, always time for questions, so people can ask questions. I know there's lots of um, gray areas in the world of climate change and what that means for us as an island and yeah. also for food. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a great opportunity to talk to I feel like Albie's like the smartest person in the world about climate change. He's I might be biased, at but the top of the list. he's pretty smart. So great that we'll be able to pick his brain there. And then 3 p.m. we'll have another cooking and pono food demo. Um, we're closing up shop a little bit early because there will then be at 4 p.m. a free um, concert by Jake. So bring your ukulele. And Jake Shimabukoro? Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, wow. Yeah, free concert. That is fantastic. Yeah. I love how it seems like there's a lot of like fun kind of uh, light things going on, but then there's some pretty very important heavy conversations going on. So, yeah, so what a great mixture of lots of things to learn, deep conversations, but having a fun time at the same time. Pretty much in my life I've learned if you keep food around, you will keep people interested. So yeah. we like to mix it up a little bit. So that's a perfect segue <laughs> uh, because we're kind of talking about this specific event and this isn't something that just happened overnight, this is really kind of a, a collaboration of, of the work that you do and your husband, Mark Noguchi, do uh, with your two organizations, Pili Group and Under My Umbrella. Um, can you talk a little bit about, so when you say, starting like with Pili Group, so you sure. kind of mentioned a few things that you guys are doing. You mentioned the um, with uh, Key Project, mm -hmm. where you're feeding the Kapuna, and then also, uh, obviously, the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. But what is, is Pili Group? And, and then how's that tie in with Under My Umbrella? Sure. So, well, it ties in through marriage. Um, oh, marriage. Yes, that's how marriage. you do it. That's okay. how you do it. But, I just haven't figured that out yet. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Peely Group is, uh, we're, we're a food group. Um, my husband is a chef, as you know, and he started out um, doing several restaurants, and we actually closed our last cafe in December mm -hmm. because we're so focused on community and on working within our community. And unfortunately, running a restaurant full time doesn't. Um, create a lot of space for being able to be out there engaging in the community. Yeah. So we still have our catering arm of our business. We mm -hmm. do a lot of caterings, corporate events, nonprofit events, experiences, kind of out of the box um, kinds of things are what we really like to do, mm -hmm. um, which also ties in my event experience and being able to do the logistics of helicoptering in tables so you can set them up and, you know, make a kitchen in the middle of nowhere. Is that something you literally had to do? Uh, it's been done. Wow. We'll have to <laughs> say that for the next show. That we'll sounds amazing. That for the next show. <laughs> but so doing all kinds of different catering events and working on community projects like this with our partners. Um, we've worked with you on a lot of things and the Food Hub and working with Ulupono on things they're doing with the community college, with other restaurants, with farmers. So Pili Group is really, it's a, it's a passion project, um, and my husband 
who t can tell you that he can't, you know, he can't focus on one thing for too long. Yeah. It's a good balance for him. So he's cooking a lot, getting to cook a lot of different kinds of foods, um, not just cooking the same menus over and over, but also allowing time for him to be out in the community, whether it's working in Aloi. We leave on Sunday. We're going to help rebuild a water system on Kauai oh, after wow. the recent flooding. Yeah. And if we had a restaurant space, that wouldn't be possible for us to yeah. fly over there and help with that. So we're really happy to be where we're at and able to engage with our community more authentically and more deeper dive than just kind of scratching on the surface and talking about it yeah. and putting it on our menus all the time. Um, Under My Umbrella is a event and public relations company, and we've been around for almost a decade. Huh? Um, that's how Mark and I met. I hired him to cater an event okay. for the Food Policy Council mm. back in version one days of that. Okay, so, I never um, knew that story, okay. And then we worked on Ingredients Hawaii together, which was a film we worked on with Bob Bates that was really fun, and so kind of like you trying to get me here, he just kept asking and I finally gave in. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> finally figured out how to get it done. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but under my umbrella, we work primarily with nonprofits um, and with businesses that are, with local businesses that are scaling up. So I came from a documentary film world. I then went to work for a nonprofit and I found that I saw this um, situation happening with nonprofits where they have the best of intentions in planning events and doing their outreach, but they're so busy doing their mission, the work yeah. that they should be doing, mm -hmm. that they never get to give 100% to the events and to the communication side of things. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what if we pull that outside of the organization, mm -hmm. but take someone who has the heart for doing things the nonprofit way, you know, whether it's bringing communities together or working with a committee or with a guild, and but by removing it from the organization, being able to really take it to that next level yeah. and take the stress out of their life when it comes to event logistics, because they're definitely not for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm weird and I, 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 I love the stress of events, hmm. um, but not everybody does. It's right. not for everyone. So. For us to be able to provide this to nonprofits and to companies and let them really work on whether they're growing their business or they have 7,000 employees and that you know that's what they need to be focusing on is their yeah. mission, we can bring the event skills to the workplace and really make sure that we stay true to what their mission is. We work with them the way that they feel comfortable working, but we reach that we really help them reach their goals. And it's awesome for us to do that because we get to work with so many amazing community members, so many great organizations and companies. Not only do we get to know them and form relationships, but we feel like we're giving back to our community yeah. by helping them do their job and helping them reach their mission. Wow. Amanda, that's awesome. Uh, it's really cool to see that you guys are really practicing what you're preaching, and I love how you're focusing on getting back into the communities you're working with. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Unfortunately, we are out of time. But I definitely want to have you and Mark back on the show again because there's still plenty of other things for us to talk about. So, yeah, thanks again. This was Hawaii Food and Farmer Series, and we will see you again in two weeks. Aloha.